Hello and welcome back to the Curious Confusion, your unfiltered, unapologetic Asian activist. Now, before I let you go off and uh, celebrate the birthday of America's favorite Palestinian philosopher with acts of conspicuous copulation and consumption, I'm gonna be uh, giving you a little talk on cultural appropriation. Now, you see, a lot of people are very, very upset in the Western countries, you know. They're upset because they think that their freedoms are being infringed upon, you know, by the woke social justice warrior mob who apparently think they have a patent on certain elements of culture. Like, there's been a lot of bro ha, -ha about, you know, uh, you know, minorities getting upset for no good reason, who protest for nothing, you know, uh, like, like Asian Americans being upset by Caucasian people adopting Chinese clothing. You know, the common theme that you see is, is basically uh, Caucasian people uh, in the Anglosphere going like, well, Asian people in Asia are not upset when a Western person puts on Asian clothing. So I don't see why Asian Americans need to be upset about it. I think that that's not true Asian culture for them to get upset about it. They're just upset because they've adopted Western thoughts of patterns of thought, social justice, warriorism, wokeism, blah, blah, blah. So, so, um, okay. Um, the thing is, uh, that's basically a moot point though, to say that, you know, Asians in America have got the same, uh, historical experience as Asians in Asia, you know, uh, first of all, Asians in America, um, you know, uh, don't have the same historical experience as Asians in Asia. Like, if you're an Asian in Asia, you're, you're the dominant majority. You know, being an Asian guy in Asia is like being a white guy in America. Let, let me put it that way. Uh, you don't feel that you are a minority whose culture is being eroded, who's being pressured to conform to uh, standards of whiteness to keep your model minority card, right? Um, the thing is, uh, minorities in America, be it the African Americans, the Native Americans, or the Asian Americans, uh, you know, if you're a minority, you, 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 you no doubt have, on certain occasions, experienced a thing called microaggressions. Now, microaggressions means people don't assault you explicitly for your race. They don't go like, Ah, go back to China, you chink. That that's a macroaggression. That's by and far, you know, you know, most most races, uh, or most uh, bigots in the Western countries, are sensible enough to be civilized on the surface with people of color, but oftentimes their bigotry seeps out through microaggressions. Like, you know, they may make fun of your culture. They may make fun of your uh, food. They may make fun of your uh, uh, customs and traditions like the multi-generational family unit. And at the same time, they'll also say, well, you're in America. People who come to America should speak English and adopt Western ways of life. Um, although I don't think that the, uh, the people who came on the, <laughs> you know, the, 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 the Mayflower uh, had the same kind of thinking of assimilating into the local culture when they actually came over. <laughs> okay, anyway, that's beside the point. You see, if you're an, a person of color living in the West, and you're constantly being subjected to microaggressions, you know, you're constantly being told you're not white enough, indirect or in or indirect terms, or, you know, you're, you're, you, you constantly feel pressure to hyphenate in order to be socially acceptable, right? Uh, this can take a toll on you and it can turn you into a very, very, um, you know, hypersensitive person. Like I said, uh, 
Asians in Asia are very, very culturally secure. We, 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 we don't, um, uh, we're be, I'm trying to tell, I try to explain to Asians in Asia, you know, who, who don't understand why Asian Americans get very, very upset about cultural appropriation. It's because we're not the dominant, we're, we're not the minority in Asia, we're, we're the dominant majority. But in America, they are like a, a minority whose culture is constantly getting eroded. Uh, as I said, constantly pressured to hyphenate. Um, now, what, what are my thoughts on people adopting, co-opting elements of other cultures into their wardrobes? Well, I'm fine with it. Personally, I'm fine with it. I mean, uh, to be frank, uh, people, there, there is no such thing as absolute cultural purity. Now, first of all, I don't think that any race has got a patent on their culture, yeah. I think that, uh, you know, um, the culture is something that is abstract, not concrete, right? It's not something like a like a like a like a cigarette lighter or a or a or a mobile phone that you can have ownership over. It's something that people can take. They can embrace if they like, uh, if they see fit to do so, right? Um, I personally would be thrilled if more foreign people, foreigners, would embrace the values of Asian civilization, but I wouldn't force it down their throat. Nevertheless, um, yeah, you know, they should do it on their own accord, you know? Uh, I'm not, I don't think Asian culture is evangelical in that regard. Uh, we're not evangelical, so we don't shove it down people's throats. Uh, we don't go like, ah, the values of Asian civilization are better than that of the rest of the world. But we don't do that. Um, if people want to adopt Confucian culture, that's really uh, their own uh, volition. They should do it on their own volition. Um, so, yeah. I think the main reason why people are upset about cultural appropriation uh, is not because white people are adopting people of colors culture like uh, their clothing or their hairstyle or their you know or, or things like that but i think the reason that they're upset is because you know there is a difference between cultural appreciation and cultural appropriation like I recall a couple of years ago, uh, an American girl, uh, she, she, she decided to put on a chipao um, as part of her prom attire. Um, and, and she was roasted, <laughs> roasted very, very badly by the uh, Asian American community. A lot of them were going like, you know, my culture is not your prom dress. My culture is not a fetish, something like that. So understand me, I, I, I would be, wouldn't blame her if she doesn't want to touch Asian culture anymore with a 10-foot pole. Uh, okay, strictly speaking, a chi pao is not actually Han Chinese culture, yeah. Um, the Han Fu, the Han Fu is actually Han Chinese culture. Um, I'm, I've done a video on the Han Fu before, so yeah, um, you can go back to my Han Fu video uh, a couple of months ago. But the thing is, the thing is, let's let's just just forget about being a pedant for a moment and assume that the chi pao is part of Chinese culture. Okay, it isn't really. Um, it's actually a um, by and large, it's a modern invention. Yeah, uh, originated the original source material for the chi pao came from the Manchus, but um, by and large, it is uh, more of a Western sort of thing. Okay, um, that came about with the. Liberalization of China in the 1920s, uh, the equivalent of the flapper movement. Anyway, um, of course, that there was a new new life movement that had to that by Chiang Kai Shek to stamp down this degenerative liberal culture. But yeah, um, I I don't think that uh, that I don't believe in all that. Right wing fascist nonsense. I think I think people should be free to enjoy whatever clothing they want. However, however, I'm digressing. The 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 point is, 
oftentimes uh, the source of people's anger at cultural appropriation is the what they perceive to be the blatant disrespect and disregard for their culture. Now, if you're a Caucasian person at the other side of the screen, you're probably thinking, what do you mean disrespect? I've adopted your culture, man. I've, uh, I'm, I'm wearing your clothing, man. I'm eating your food, man. Of course, I respect your culture. But the thing is, it's very different to try and promote the culture in a positive way uh, and to you know, and to try and teach others about the uh, culture in a way that shines a good light upon it, uh, and or adopting elements of that culture just for one day, just for a fan fancy dress day or Halloween party. You know, haha, today I'm going to wear sari, or perhaps today I'm going to wear kimono or hanfu or something. And then the other 365 days of the week, you're, you're basically saying like, well, if you come to America, adopt Western values, adopt Western culture. So, you know, people are wondering, why is it that you pressured me to hyphenate all that time? You, you basically made fun of my food, my customs, my traditions. And then you only show appreciation for my culture on a fancy dress day, on a on a Halloween party day, but you don't treat my culture with equal respect as you do yours, meaning that you would never deign to call a sari, for example, uh, serious business clothing. You would never deign to do that, but you, you would happily wear a sari for fancy dress day. So that to me is, I think, the source of anger that a lot of uh, uh, people of color have, you know, uh, this uh, superficial show of respect of, of enjoying one's cultural elements without really respecting or understanding the culture behind it or trying to make the culture more socially acceptable, right? Um, another thing that pisses people off, I think, is, is the fact that, you know, when people uh, adopt elements of one culture, like, like when white people do something, when Caucasian people... Uh, co-opt certain aspects of a culture. They are praised as being progressive, open-minded, and um, it's seen in a positive way. But based on my conversations with some people of color in the West, when the people of color do that, when they, when they, when they, when they do the exact same thing to express themselves through their culture, like let's say they wear, you know, dreadlocks, now, dreadlocks, you know, uh, is what was actually considered to be unprofessional it, for many, many years, um, you know, uh, because it was actually considered unprofessional because the, uh, the, well, there were very, very Eurocentric sort of uh, rules in the American office for a very, very long time. Like, you had to wear like a suit, a jacket and a tie and and basically that was meant to, um, you know, to, to reward people for following Western culture and uh, leaving their culture at the door, right? Um, so, at, at, um, when, when people started, when Caucasian people started adopting dreadlocks, well, that was suddenly viewed as something trendy and something uh, progressive, but when African-American people did it, it was considered to be uh, something frowned upon, you know, um, something ghetto, so to speak. And, and you can understand that why uh, some African-Americans uh, are very, very upset with the Korean pop band BTS for uh, apparently appropriating black culture. Now, the Asian American community is, of course, very confused by that. They are saying that, what do you mean we appropriated black culture? Um, understandable, because um, culture is a geographic uh, thing. There's Asian culture, there's African culture, there's European culture, there's Middle Eastern culture, there's Aboriginal Australian culture, there's Native American culture. But you can't say that a culture is black or white or yellow because Culture has no color, man. 
culture it, culture is something that's transient and your biology is not your cultural destiny like i i know asian people ethnically asian people like myself who are more <laughs> who who know jack shit about asian culture who are probably more european than the average west oh, european and uh, there are um there are western people and african people who know more about confucianism than i do you know your, your culture is something that you choose it's not something that's inherent in your biology you know um so i i have I, t I do take issue with this notion of black culture because first of all african americans don't really have much in common they, they don't they're not really in touch generally speaking not all but generally speaking most african americans are not really in touch with the culture of africa the native culture of africa right uh, because and it's not their fault because two and a half centuries ago they were forcibly removed from their homelands and they were you know that their, their language was stifled uh, every vestige of their culture was stifled and they were forced to assimilate matriculate if you will into the dominant anglo-western culture right so a black culture is really more western in origin but it's got nothing to do with the culture of the zulu tribe or the uh, uh, Maasai tribe or, 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 or those African tribes. I imagine that those tribes would also find black culture, uh, you know, like the hip hop culture to be very, very alien. It's not something that they would uh, necessarily uh, identify with. Um, but the anger that stemmed from BTS adopting what they perceived to be black culture was largely due to the fact that from their perspective, when they, when they express these elements of culture, like, uh, for example, when they wear baggy uh, clothing and they, they wear typically, gosh, I don't really like using this word, but when they, if they, if they wear a typically ghetto outfit, which originated from white rednecks, but let's say they do that, uh, they would not get as positive a reception as an Asian person like BTS doing the very same thing. Like when a, an Asian person like BTS does the same thing because of the model minority moniker, whites look at them like, oh, cool, hip, trendy, you know, fashionable, um, open-minded, willing to adopt elements of African-American culture. But when an African-American does it, the very same whites who call Asians a model minority will say, ha, ghetto backward that's why you don't progress and, and also like um yeah even even people like thomas Sowell, who's really a spiritually a white man he's not really spiritually he's not actually a black man he's more of a white man than a black man yeah um even he will say oh this culture is ghetto backward it's the reason why african americans don't progress but these very same people don't have an issue with bts uh, an asian person doing the very same thing you see so the, the angry, the African-Americans were angry about it. They're like, why is it that when I do it, I get penalized? But when an Asian person does it, they don't get penalized. And when you borrow elements of my culture, you're not actually trying to, uh, you, you're, you're, you're not actually trying to, 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 to fight racism. You're not trying to fight bigotry against my culture. But as I stress, this is not actually part of native African culture. Yeah, but, but the, the thing is, that's not really true. I mean, uh, BTS actually does support Black Lives Matter. It does fight bigotry and, you know, cultural intolerance. Yeah, um, so I, I hope it's understandable now that uh, why people are offended by what they perceive to be cultural appropriation. Uh, although I, I also need to add that I don't take issue with people adopting elements of other cultures, as long as they genuinely appreciate those cultures and they aren't just doing it for fun, you know, they, they really feel that they identify with it. Like, I've always wanted to wear a kilt, a Scottish kilt, to tell you the truth. Um, I, don't, I don't have kilts. We don't have kilts in Asia. 
But um, if kilts were exported to Asia, I would be one of the first people to buy them. Uh, yeah, they are very, very nice. They show off your legs and they look very, very good. Uh, but they also look, I think they're aesthetically beautiful. And um, to tell someone that they can't adopt elements of your culture because they're not your race is simply put racist, right? You can't, it's like telling a black man, oh, you are not worthy of wearing a kilt, even though a black man would like to wear a kilt because you're not Scottish. You see, that, that would be construed as being racist, right? That only a white man is, 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 is a able to wear this article of clothing. But what if the black man really likes kilts? You see, so, um, but at the same time, I think, I think that um, people who want to adopt elements of uh, other people's cultures, um, who want to adopt other cultures, and, and all, 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 all cultures are an amalgamation of different cultures. But at the same time, I think, I think um, care needs to be taken to ensure that the culture is portrayed in an accurate manner. Like, you don't dress up like this uh, geisha doll, you know? You don't dress up with like a, like a sultry geisha with your, your tits sticking out and your, you know, revealing all mm -hmm. kinds of body parts and say that this is Japanese culture. It's, it's very disrespectful. Geishas are not prostitutes, first of all, and it reeks of Orientalism. But if you really like the culture and you're going to make an effort to try and combat negative stereotypes about the culture, you know, like Voltaire, um, who else? Ah, uh, uh, what was his name? I forgot his name. What, the American... Ben Franklin, yeah. People like Voltaire, Ben Franklin, who... Um, they did speak very positively about Asian culture and they, they did make an effort to try and get Westerners to understand Asian culture. That's okay. I have no issue with adopting elements of Asian culture. But what I do have issue with is that if you are a non-Asian person and you just put on Asian clothing for one day of a week, but for the rest of the year, you're telling Asians like, oh, your culture is not as good as our Western culture. Oh, you know, you need to hyphenate. You need to be more American or you need to, you need to adopt Western ways of life or, or your, you know, things like that. Then, of course, that is cultural appropriation. So it, it's very, very, um, it's very slippery slope. I think, um, I think great uh, care needs to be taken uh, to distinguish people who genuinely appreciate the culture and people who just treat it like a like a you know a flyby fetish so to speak uh, people who just treat it in a flippant manner and uh, although i don't think that any legal action should be taken against anyone who disrespects our culture or you know i'm, I'm not a fascist i just i just think that you should try you should understand why people are angry, you know, when they perceive that their culture is being disrespected. Like, appreciating our culture doesn't mean you simply say like, oh, I'll wear it for a fancy dress party or a Halloween party, but the rest of the year I tell you, I, I will put it away and I'll tell other minorities to hyphenate. Um, yeah. So yeah, that, that's about it really. I mean, it's, uh, I, that's all I have to say. Uh, nobody has the pattern on any specific culture, but I think that I can see the point of view of both sides. I don't think that the American girl, she's very young, I don't think she should have been uh, hounded like that. I can understand why American Asian Americans were angry, of course, after years and years of microaggressions and disrespect to their culture. Suddenly they see a white person, but... Having said that, I don't think that, I, 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 I hope that that American girl doesn't get put off from Asian culture <laughs> from this point on. I wouldn't blame her though, she doesn't touch Chinese culture with a 10-foot pole anymore. But yeah, uh, I, I do think both sides need to try and, you know, see the other's point of view. Um, yeah, both the 
people from the dominant majority and the minority. But, you know, um, I, 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 I understand why people are angry, but at the same time, you know, I think that if, if people are genuinely adopting elements of the culture and they truly respect the culture, you know, then, then I guess it's fine by me. It's, in fact, I'd be thrilled if someone were to adopt Confucian culture. But as I said, I'm not going to shove it down your throat. You, you do what's best for you. I'm not an evangelist. So that Asian culture is not, it is insular. It is not evangelical, excuse me, by nature. So, um, yeah. Anyway, Merry Christmas and um, make sure that you guys uh, take care of your health. And uh, I'll see you all next year. No, I'll probably see you all tomorrow. Another video. Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year.